Hello everyone and welcome to one more tutorial or lecture and today we are going to talk about real-time PCR. Well PCR as you know this is polymerase chain reaction and uh, you can have a look on the lecture or tutorial that we have available on the molecular and cellular biology playlist here on Salmonella Place if you want to learn more about the specifics or the details on this DNA amplification technique. So, but in general you can understand that PCR, polymerase chain reaction, is used when you want to make several copies or enough copies of a DNA segment so you can study in lab conditions, in in vitro conditions. So what I want to say now is that real-time PCR uh, will follow, like I just mentioned, the general principles of polymerase chain reaction. But the main thing here is that its amplified DNA is detected as the reaction progresses in real time rather than uh, the standard PCR that you find out there where the product is detected at the end of the procedure. So you're able to measure the concentration of your of your amplified product uh, throughout the whole polymerase chain reaction. There are two common methods of real-time PCR. The first one is non-specific fluorescent dyes that intercalate or bind with any double-stranded DNA and you can therefore detect the amplified product uh, in real time. The second common method is sequence specific DNA probes. Something like you can see here in this illustration, this is a sequence specific DNA probes and they're cons they consist of oligonucleotides or um, a few nucleotides that are labeled with a fluorescent reporter which permits or allows detection only after hybridization of the probe with its complementary DNA target. In other words, this DNA probe that you see here will have will be hybridized and um, bind to its complementary sequence in another uh, with a DNA template or the DNA sequence that you want to detect in real-time PCR. And this is the, the method that we're going to discuss a little bit in more detail. This one can, you can have, uh, you can read about it online and on your books, but we're just going to cover for your classes. I think this one should be enough. So now it's time to go over the principles or the steps of real-time PCR. There are three steps. And in order for us to understand them, I do encourage you to check out the lecture on PCR here on Salmonella Place. You can find it on the Molecular and Cellular uh, Biology Lectures playlist. That way you can understand these steps because this is basically adding knowledge to your previous knowledge, let's say. So the first step of real-time PCR is going to be polymerization. The second step is going to be release of fluorescent dye by TAC polymerase. And the final and third step is going to be degradation of probe and then completion of polymerization. So on to step one of the real-time PCR, polymerization. And here, as you can see, the PCR is prepared as usual. You have a DNA template here. And as you can also see here, on this side you have a primer, this yellow structure here, and on the other side also another primer. So the same uh, primer binding uh, step that you see in PCR. The difference here is that a reporter probe is added. And the probe is an oligonucleotide, so it has few nucleotides and it has one side that contains a quencher, which is what is going to decrease the fluorescence. And also on the other side, this yellow structure here, is the fluorescent dye. This is what is going to report us the, what is going on on real time. 
So as a reaction goes during the binding stage of PCR, both the probe and the primers will bind to the DNA template. And this is what you see on step one of real-time PCR. So it's time to talk about step number two of real-time PCR, and this is the release of fluorescence dye by TAC polymerase. What is happening now is polymer polymerization of a new DNA strand is initiated from the primers, as you can see, and once the polymerase reaches the probe, it will degrade that probe and physically separate the fluorescent reporter from, or the fluorescent dye, you can call it, from the quencher, resulting in increased fluorescence. And then fluorescence can be detected and measured in real-time PCR machine. And that is what real-time PCR allows you to do. It is time to go over the third and last step of real-time PCR. And this is when you're going to see the degradation of the probe when the TAC polymerase continues to synthesize the DNA strand. So the TAC polymerase will degradate this area here, this probe. As you can see, I'm trying to draw it as best as I can. So this is the degradated probe. And then what's going to happen is that quencher that you see there is going to be released. And therefore, as you know, and as I explained to you, that the quencher will decrease the fluorescence. So once you had a fluorescent dye that was giving you a sign where the TAC polymerase was working on, and now you have another sign of the quencher saying that, hey, you know, I have been degraded, the probe has been degraded, the quencher has been released, and therefore this is where the reaction is going right now. And of course, there is the proceeding or the polymerization will continue and finish the DNA synthesis. 